Okay, so thank you for joining us. Uh, originally, we have a plan to introduce IBC at first by Jeffrey, and then I'll introduce our current product, base IBC or Fabric IBC or CrossFitMap. But, uh, you know, uh, we will call Jeffrey now. So. I want to start our session. Uh, so let me see. Hmm. Okay, so uh, I skip an explanation for overview of IBC protocol. Sorry, but uh, it, it's a uh, Jeffrey Pat. So I start my session about our product about IBC. So based on IBC, Fabric IBC, Cross Framework, or our Fabric Hyperledger UE. Uh, so sorry for this inconvenience. So uh, before my presentation, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Ryo Sato, a senior blockchain architect at DataChain. Uh, DataChain is a tech startup working on interoperability solutions for blockchains. And I'm working on open source products we have such as Fabric IBC and also these several interoperability projects. So I'm going to talk about the design of IBC modules, such as base IBC and fabric IBC. Then I will show you an overview of our cross framework, which provides a cross chain operation like atomic swap on top of IBC. Finally, I'd like to introduce our current work on hyperledger labs. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay, uh, so. I, IBC utilizes cross authentication for verification, which means ledger wise on chain like client verifies the hidden and state in LedgerX. Also, there's a relayer that fetches and relays outgoing packets between LedgerX and Y, as well as block headers of each blockchain. A packet consists of a payload from one blockchain to another and verifiable proof for it. There are two important functions to achieve cross-authentication, namely verify membership and check header. Uh, these function names are actually a bit longer, but we are simplifying them here. In the receiver chain, ledger Y on this slide, check header is keeping a header of ledger X and updates current state on ledger Y. Also, Verify membership is giving a key value pair and its proof. Then verifies which as a pair exists in the ledger based on the proof. These functions should make use of underlying ledger structure. So we design and develop such functions for the hyperledger base and hyperledger fabric. So I'd like first to explain the core concept of base IBC. For hyperledger base, the grant works in a similar way as the light ground of Ethereum works. In base, a block header contains a root hash of a macro tree consisting of all account storages. Each contract's account storage is also a macro tree, and proofs for a key value pair on each storage can be obtained from base nodes. As such, a uh, client state maintains a root hash of a specific contract account and updates it on receiving a new header. A specific key value pair can be verified with its marker path and the root hash. So, verify membership verifies a key value pair with its marker path and the root hash. Um, so, uh, IBFT2 uh, base consensus algorithm features a dynamic var data set. So we also need to verify it. 
In base IBC, a vertical set is verified in check header. In a full node case, verification of such a dynamic set is easy, as you can verify a newly elected variable by checking the approval of the last variable sets. However, this is not the case for inter-blockchain communication. Typically, not all block headers are presented. We think it is not realistic to relay all the block headers between two ledgers. So, we introduced a trusting period inspired by Tendermint and Cosmos. Here, we have four varieties, A, B, C, and D, for a valid block header. Then, another block header with parameter A, B, D, F is received. If the interval between these two blocks is within the trusting period, we can say A, B, and D are trusted, thus skipping verifications of these three parameters. We think this is a reasonable assumption and convenient for lightweight verification. Please refer to our documentation for more details. Okay, so let's just move on to Fabric ABC. Hyperledger Fabric manages a world state differently from Hyperledger Base. And since Fabric does not provide inclusion proof for its tree structure, we need to come up with a different idea for verifying its state. Fabric IBC utilizes proposal response or read write set for verification. The basic idea is that if you query a chain code, you will get a read write set for corresponding key value pairs with an endorsement fit signature. We use this signature as membership proof in Fabric IBC. Here, in Leisure X, a relayer invokes a chain code to query specific key value pairs to its world state and return the proposal responses from endorsers that satisfy an endorsement policy, make a packet to be relayed. Then in Ledger Y, the packet is verified using verified membership with an endorsement policy for IBC. Here, plant states use endorsed signatures for verification. So speaking of endorsement policy for IBC, Hyperledger Fabric does not support on-chain functionality of synchronization of an endorsement policy with other ledgers. Moreover, an endorsement policy can be dynamic on runtime. As such, we designed to provide a policy as a property for client in Ledger Y. Namely, you can call create client to set an IPC policy and call update client to verify a new one with the old one and then update it. This policy should be designed to be compliant with the original Ledger X endorsement policies. The client in Ledger Y checks endorsed signatures according to the IBC policy for verification. Oh, sorry, Jeffrey, hi. We change part part order, okay? Yeah, yeah, please, please continue, please continue. Deeply sorry for I uh, uh, met a terrible no problem. network problem. Just... Oh, okay. So, okay, so next, we would also like to mention how we make use of these IBC modules for cross-chain operations. We have developed a cross framework, which enables developers to implement a cross-chain smart contract on top of IBC. Cross framework mainly consists of two modules. The first one is a transaction coordinator. This coordinates a request to execute multiple contracts among blockchains. It authenticates each contract call within the request, invokes them, and manages their results. The second one is a state store, and this is a wrapper for the contract state store with a locking mechanism for enabling cross chain transactional operation. Uh, such as a two-phase commit. With this mechanism, we can first lock a key before updating, then after checking everything's went right, so we commit a new value to it. Cross-framework supports an atomic commit among blockchains. 
For example, suppose we have two ledgers X and Y with two contract transactions A and B respectively that we want to execute atomically. If contract transaction A fails on ledger X, the result of contract transaction B will not be reflected in chain Y. We believe that cross framework will further expand the application scenario of blockchain interoperability. So as a practical use case, we conducted a proof of concept using IBC modules and cross framework for delivery versus payment, DVP settlement, the atomic swap between asset and payment token for global trade operation. In this project, we teamed up with NTT Data, a company that has a blockchain-based trade platform. Here, the asset of trading goods is maintained in Hyperledger Fabric as a trade platform, and the payment token is maintained in Scandamid Network as a payment platform. With cross framework, we can achieve a cross chain atomic operation between two networks, thus mitigating the need for a trusted third party, such as an escrow account. Also, with cross framework, we can reduce user interactions. In comparison with another trustless method, HDLC, it requires both an exporter and importer to monitor the other party's transaction and respond to it appropriately, which results in a complicated user interaction during a trade. We believe the scheme that Cross Framework provides reduces the burden of trade settlement. We continue working to commercialize this technology on trade platform. We also seek opportunities to try it in other application areas. So lastly, uh, in my part, uh, I'd like to talk about our current work on Hyperledger. We have released our Hyperledger lab called the UE as an interoperability solution for the, for the Hyperledger family. And it includes related products uh, such as Fabric IBC, Base IBC, and Corda IBC. We are expanding this lab to add a framework for cross-chain applications like Cross Framework, as well as tools like Explorer for cross-chain transactions. Uh, sorry. Uh, they were initially developed and are mainly maintained by DataChain for now. However, Bianchi AI is also supporting and contributing to the UE lab. So please refer to the lab page for more details. Okay, so... Uh, my part is over and... Okay, can you hear uh, see my screen right now? So, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, let me start with my, my part of the presentation. Um, yeah, so uh, t uh, actually uh, for this session with uh, I and uh, Liao Sam from the edition team, uh, we will talk about the IBC particle, how this kind of the IBC particle can be integrated with uh, permissioned enterprise the blockchains can bring this kind of uh, interoperabilities. So um, actually, <laughs> it, it, it is uh, deeply uh, sorry for that. Uh, I late for the presentation, so uh, I will just uh, make a short, very short introduction for myself and also the, the Bianjie. Uh, I am the research director of the Bianjie team right now, heads for the strategy and also the de uh, technical research right now, also the ecosystem uh, system development of Bianjie also, and, uh, Actually, Bianjie is a high-tech enterprise in China, and we are also a co-dev team of the a public blockchain project called Aristat, and we are also the co-dev team for uh, contributing to the BSN Wenchang Open Permission Blockchain, and also uh, a permission, uh, also a, a, a blockchain project called Arita Hub, which is focused on the interoperabilities. So uh, and, and Liu Sang, you you gave a, uh, or you already gave a, a self introduction before. Uh, you, may, maybe you want to. Okay, great. <laughs> yes, great. Yes, yes. Okay, I will move to the next page. So um, I, I believe the Liu Sang have already uh, introduced uh, a lot of about the base of IBC fabric IBC. It's kind of the module based on the IBC particle. So I, for my part, I will uh, focus on the IBC particle this introduction and also the differences 
and how this kind of the uh, IBC can be applied in the infrastructure level. Uh, we practiced in the IoT Hub how we combine the IBC and the, the I service, which is called the integer service. So, um, uh, what is IBC protocol? It is short for the inter-blockchain communication protocols, uh, which is proposed by the Cosmos project. And it is uh, a focus on the heterogeneous uh, blockchains communications. Also, uh, it assumes uh, no uh, top topologies between this kind of uh, network, how they are uh, connected. So it is also follow a, a design idea quite similar to the TCP IP. So it is abstracted how the like the, the ledgers, how this uh, connection works, and how this data pack can be transmitted between the different networks. So here are also um, uh, uh, a picture that can show this kind of ability at the red corner of this uh, slide. So uh, each dot you can see here, it, uh, actually it is a, a blockchain network. So um, each network can be connected with each other freely, uh, trustlessly. Uh, that can uh, almost, can, can, can even, it can become a circle that connected with each other. So it assumes not a hub spoke topology between this net kind of network. So it is re it's really like a TCP IP, which can be uh, fully leveraged this kind of question abilities. And for more information, you can also re uh, refer to uh, this uh, website. So what is IBC is and what is, uh, it is about? Actually, there are many kinds of misunderstanding about the IBC and also the Cosmos project. Well, the IBC protocol is actually is not only about the application layer uh, 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 particles. Like um, some people may argue that it only handles the asset cost and transfer the blockchain. Uh, actually, it is not because uh, IBC is it handles the data transport and the actually it's uh, uh, quite on the communication layer. So, um, uh, so it is data can be verified trustlessly by another. Uh, blockchain and it's not also uh, not uh, uh, and also in our uh, no root chains in this kind of networks so it is also not a layer two particles like we can see uh, many solutions in the ethereum right now into this kind of architectures. So IBC, uh, it, this kind of module actually it has some core uh, concept in the uh, whole particles. So the first one is uh, for sure is a ledger, or we can call this distributed uh, ledgers. It abstracted like, um, uh, we, can, we can see that the ledger, it is a state machine, and also it store a key value in this kind of a ledger. So, um, and we could go deeper into this kind of ledger. We can see the, uh, this, uh, the module here, uh, which is the sub component of a ledger. It handles uh, the state transition between uh, uh, in, in a state machine. And also um, uh, we can see like uh, many kind of smart contract can be seen as a module on a, like on a, a blockchains. So um, it, it is also a special module called the IBC module, which is specifically handles the question transaction into in a ledger. So this is called the IBC module, which it can uh, uh, contains also another kind of uh, uh, components like the client, uh, which is uh, verify another, uh, which is the live client to verify another uh, blockchain transactions. Also there are uh, connections to maintain the state a consensus state and also the channels to uh, for the message delivery, ordering, and also the uh, like uh, the authentications. And here is also another very important concept. I also mentioned, uh, also noticed that uh, already have questions in the uh, in, 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 in this session. So, uh, what is a relayer? Actually, a relayer is uh, uh, off chain like client uh, process that can ju just focus down the tr uh, message. Uh, transmit. Uh, so uh, 
the actually uh, the both the ledger A or ledger B do not trust do not need to trust the the relayer because uh, these two blockchains uh, verify each uh, each other's transactions uh, respectively. Um, so relayer just uh, translates kind of a message to uh, between these IBC modules, and the client inside of this IBC module will verify uh, the message from another blockchain. So the I uh, so. So both the ledger don't need to uh, trust this relay. So it is not a gateway or a third party risk in, inside of the relay. So if there is uh, at least one relay is working, the whole cross chain works. So here is also um, uh, a flow for this kind of transaction because of the time. Uh, Time problem. I, I may go. Uh, I, I may do not have enough time to go deeper into this. But uh, from from this kind of flow, you can see that it's quite like the TCP/IP flow because um, the message will uh, go from the top level, uh, go deeper into like uh, the uh, connection, and also go to the consensus. And this kind of message will be transmitted to a relayer, uh, uh, by a relayer to a chain B, and uh, the transactions will be handled. Uh, uh, so this kind of uh, consensus on the chain B, and also go back to the, the uh, go go up to the uh, uh, application uh, layer to uh, on a chain B. So this is uh, basically a uh, transaction flow of this uh, whole IBC per process. So there uh, actually there are many kinds of differences between the IBC and other protocols. Like uh, we also mentioned, compare or compared with the Polkadot and the, the Cosmos or maybe IBC. Actually, it is not uh, the same because uh, uh, the whole IBC protocol is uh, the bottom up, while the Polkadot is more like a, a sharding protocol. So it is a, a root chain. But the, when, when you see IBC, there's no kind of this root chains in the enterprise blockchain. And uh, we can also see there are many question projects like Cactus and Beaver in Hyperledger right now. But um, IBC actually uh, is not assumed that uh, can connect with only permission blockchain, but can also connect with the permissionless blockchain, like uh, or even centralized uh, uh, system with using the protocol that's uh, being proposed by the BNJ team. So here are two examples. Uh, the, uh, actually, uh, I believe Liao Sang had already mentioned about the data chains integration with uh, Fabric IBC and other modules. And another example I, will, I would like to share is the Irita Hub. It can leverage the IBC and also the iService to connect with different uh, blockchains like the public blockchain and the consortium blockchain and also the legacy systems. So it uh, leverages mainly about two techniques. So if uh, another blockchain that can uh, already implement the whole IBC protocols, it can, uh, like, like the Fabric IBC, uh, it can uh, uh, directly connect it on the area hub we uh, uh, developed. And also, there are also many kinds of blockchain that haven't been uh, implemented the IBC protocol right now. So we also can uh, leverage the I service on the area hub. And for this kind of module, we also uh, uh, use the another uh, tools called, the, uh, we call the, for the moment, is uh, called the smart relay because it needs to, um, to know about the application semantics of the message it transmitted compared with the relayer, uh, traditional relayer, uh, it just don't know about the uh, uh, message, what it's, uh, what it's about. So we can, uh, you can, uh, here you can find more information about this Arita Hub on the BSN environment. So this is a whole process of the how I service can work between the different networks. So the uh, so service provider can register their abilities and their uh, functions as a service on the Arita Hub. And with this uh, relayers, which we call the I service over the IBC, because IBC is a communication layer, and I service is more about the application layer. So the this kind of service definition can be transmitted to another, uh, which we call the app chain, another blockchain. And the client or user can request this uh, kind of service on the app chains uh, to uh, with uh, with the service fee that we uh, that he can call this kind of service, 
and uh, this kind of service will be uh, information will be transmitted by the relayer to back to the at the hub and service provider will listen to this kind of uh, information and transactions will give back to the uh, response and this uh, response and the result will give back uh, to the client on the app chain. So this basically is a, a whole process of the I service. So with kind of uh, with this kind of uh, uh, abilities, uh, we are right uh, right now developing on a BSN network. Right now, uh, the Elder Hub can connect with the uh, fabric uh, using the fabric module. Uh, and it can be connected uh, by the layer on the outer hub, which we believe will be realized uh, later this year. And with the smart relay, we can also connect with different kind of permission blockchain, like physical vehicles, super chain, and other uh, construction blockchains. Uh, but the users uh, uh, need to know about the service definitions uh, through the smart relay, but also can uh, uh, query less, um, many kinds of the, like the data from uh, like chain link, also uh, many kind of service on uh, different uh, public blockchains. So it's quite useful. And we also, or we are also implementing uh, other kind of the application layer uh, particles besides the fungible token transfer. We are also uh, implementing a cross NFT right now. So later on, you, you may see uh, some applications about the NFT questions, uh, like between the permission blockchain and also permissionless blockchains connected by the Ivory Hub on the BSN environment. So uh, this is because basically uh, uh, the contents I want to share for today. And at the last of our presentation, uh, we uh, also there are some contact information about our two teams, Benji and the Data Chain. You can always find me here. Thank you. So, so in a deep discussion. <laughs> so, is there any other questions besides the relay? So, no question. <laughs> no questions. Yeah, I saw the question there about the relay. The relay actually is not uh, need to trust it. Uh, need to trust. This. Okay. So, thank you for joining us and. Yeah, if you have any questions, please contact us. Yes, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.